Hello, good morning, wake up, it's almost game day. And pay attention because last week, we crushed it. I appreciate you coming back here again. It is week three of the NFL season, and we're here to help you make a little bit better picks with your DFS and DraftKings lineups. Now, if you've been here week after week, I appreciate you coming back. I appreciate you leaving a like on this video. It helps out the channel immensely. I don't enter 150 lineups each and every week. I enter two, maybe three lineups that I'm very confident in, and 50-50 double ups, as well as some of the larger three entry max, 20 entry max contests. For those of you that can afford to put in 150 lineups each and every week, hey, good on you. Go out there and win the big one. Me, I just like to be consistent and make a little extra beer money. This is All Access, your home for fantasy sports talk. I mentioned it already. We crushed it in week two. Last week, I told you, I am going to live on this page of wide receivers. These are the guys that I want to find in my lineup. That was Tyreek Hill. Christian Kirk, and Amon Ra St. Brown. Our goal each and every week is to get four times our value. So if a guy costs $5,000, we want to get 20 points. DraftKings gives you $50,000. If we're able to convert that to 200 points, that is cashing each and every week. So Nick Chubb, Tyreek Hill, Christian Kirk, Derek Carr, St. Brown, all of those guys accomplished that. Now we did have some misses, and we're always transparent here. Devontae Adams was my number one wide receiver of the week. And it kind of fell flat. Just really didn't get involved in the offense in the second half. And then Saquon Barkley going up against my Carolina Panthers. This is why I'm just going to start avoiding Carolina Panthers games. I can't win. I pick against them and I lose. I pick I pick for them and I lose. We're just leaving them off the slate. And don't forget, we had no winner last week of the Millionaire Maker Ticket. If you want your chance to win a $20 ticket funded by All Access Sports, go check out our Sleepers and Value Plays a video that came out earlier this week. You'll see a bunch of players under $5,500 that we think you can put into your lineup and get really good return on. And then this video, obviously, guys over $5,500 that are going to have a big week. First things first as we build through our lineup, the running back position, baby. Dalvin Cook against the Detroit Lions at $7,900. The Vikings should play this one closely, if not leading, meaning Dalvin Cook should get more touches, more handoffs, and more opportunities in the red zone. The Lions are near the bottom of the league in rush yards allowed per game, and I don't really see that changing here in this one with them trying to help out their defensive backs against Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and the reemergence of Irv Smith Jr. There's a lot of running backs that I really like this week. Those high-end guys might be a little bit too expensive for me. Sure, Jonathan Taylor's going to have a good week. Christian McCaffrey will have a good week. The only one that I'd really consider up there would be Derrick Henry at this point but I don't love him as much as these guys. Joe Mixon at $7,600. He's been heavily involved in the offense thus far, including catches out of the backfield, 13 targets on the season just through two weeks. Now he's going up against the New York Jets, who do allow up a middle of the road uh, rushing yards per game. I think they can exploit it here. That offensive line has got to get going from the Cincinnati Bengals, and if they don't win this game, that team could be starting 0-5, 0-6, and that is just ridiculous. David Montgomery against the Houston Texans at $5,900 might be the most popular play that you see on our slides today. The Texans allowing the third most rush yards on the season. The Bears want to be a team that runs the ball. They don't throw the ball a whole lot. The Houston Texans really aren't that good. Neither team's going to be able to sustain a lot of drives, but they are going to be depending on their run game. David Montgomery averaged over eight yards a carry last week. I don't know if this pick is going to make you any different than other lineups, but it's one that could pay off because if you're only paying $6,000 for the guy, 20-point game, not outside of the realm of possibility, and that's 3.5 times his value. Now, 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 before we get into the wide receivers, and you think, Bradley, all you did was really pick the top wide receivers on the slate. Listen, if they're worth it, they're worth it. They're high priced for a reason this week. Normally, we don't just pick the top three wide receivers, but this week it might look that way, but wait until the next slide. Truly, I think you need a cheap stack, a value running back, and go out and get some high-end wide receivers this week to win. Starting off with Cooper Cup at $9,900 against the Arizona Cardinals. Is this the best play on the slate? Maybe not but he could be the highest scoring wide receiver. That doesn't always translate well when you're looking at value. So, Cooper Cup in line for a big game. Arizona's allowing over 300 yards passing in offense per game. They're allowing the most touchdowns per game receiving, which spells for a big week for Cooper Cup. Now, if our goal is to get four times value, that means we're looking at him to try and get a 40-point game. I don't know if that's going to happen, but a 30-point game is probably a reasonable expectation. 
depending on where your money falls, if you want a 30-point game out of a wide receiver, you can almost lock in Cooper Cup for that this week. Stephon Diggs against the Miami Dolphins at $7,700. He's just a big play waiting to happen. This offense and this Bills team in general, outstanding. There's a lot of injuries in this game that you're going to have to watch out for, specifically on the Bills' defensive side, which means the Dolphins might be able to score to keep up with the Bills. Bills are a far superior team, but if the Miami Dolphins can get some big plays out of Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill, Tua, the Bills are going to have to continue to keep pressure on, and they're not going to be pulling their starters out after three quarters. Devontae Adams at $8,400 against the Tennessee Titans. They're tied with the Arizona Cardinals for the most passing touchdowns allowed on the season. And honestly, I'm looking for a bounce back week. Carr is without Josh Jacobs in this lineup, which means he's just going to go back to with what he's comfortable with, what he's familiar with, Darren Waller and Devontae Adams. A lot of people are throwing out the name Mac Hollins. Hey, if you want to go out and get him and he's a cheap play, take him. If you're looking for other cheap plays, go out and check our sleepers and values. Now, every week I give you one name that I think is going to be a good play, but I'm fading that one. This week could be Jamar Chase. At $8,100 against the New York Jets, they're allowing decent chunk plays. Jamar Chase is a very good wide receiver. This Bengals offense is a very, very good offense. But the Jets are only allowing 19.5 pass attempts per game. Now, that kind of plays in a game script and offensive philosophy of the teams that they've played. However, if that trend were to continue, Jamar Chase is not going to be getting that volume that you might want in a PPR-oriented league. $8,000. I like it. I don't love it as much as some of the other wide receivers on this page. Amon Ross St. Brown, probably going to be one of the more popular ones. And at $7,200, he's going to be worth every single penny. What's stopping you? And what can convince you? After what we just saw the Philadelphia Eagles do to this Vikings offense, what makes you think St. Brown, Hawkinson, Swift, if healthy, can have a 20-point game themselves? The Vikings were stinky against the pass last year. They're stinky against the pass in 2022. Amon Ross St. Brown and that Detroit offense could get things moving against the Minnesota Vikings. And last wide receiver on this one, Christian Kirk at $6,200. I know that I'm not the only one talking about him, but we've been talking about him every single week. If you go back and watch our videos in August, we were talking about Christian Kirk being one of the best wide receivers early on in the season. Now he's going up against the LA Chargers, who might be without Justin Herbert, which could lead to less successful offensive drives and more opportunities for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, a couple quarterbacks that just aren't mentioning the big names, right? You have Patrick Mahomes, you have Derek Carr, you have Josh Allen, you have Tua, you have Jalen. Make your own decisions on that, okay? You have to pay up to go get those guys. Matthew Stafford against the Arizona Cardinals. I already talked about them having over 300 yards allowed per game. The most reception touchdowns in the league. Well, tied for. I like his volume this week. I think Arizona offense can get going, and I look for Matt Stafford to have to put up a lot of points. Combining him and Cooper Cup is expensive, but if you want to be different, there you go. Kirk Cousins, $6,200 against the Detroit Lions. Again, if you want to be different, pair him with Justin Jefferson. It's going to be a little bit expensive, but why not run that back against the Detroit Lions? Amon Ross, St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and Kirk Cousins. This is easily the worst defense that the Minnesota Vikings have faced, and I look for their wide receivers to exploit that. If you need to make a substitution, there's a bunch of guys that we talked about in our first video of the week, like Devonta Smith, Jahan Dotson, Dobbs from Green Bay with them dealing with so many injuries, the Tampa Bay wide receiver room situation. There's value to be had across the board. Go out, get those expensive guys, and then find and plug in one of the cheaper plays. The first one, the Minnesota Vikings. It's not cheap with Justin Jefferson, but it's probably going to be the most popular run back with the Vikings and then bring back Amon Ra or TJ Hawkinson, and possibly even DeAndre Swift, who's nicely priced the jacksonville jaguars we talked about christian kirk i think trevor lawrence is still undervalued in terms of DraftKings pricing if justin herbert is out of this game i really think the jaguars are going to get more opportunities with the ball right less sustained drives from the chargers more opportunities more punts that means trevor lawrence is going to have the ball in his hand a little bit more than he normally does and lastly one that's emerged over the last few days that a lot of people are starting to talk about and bubble up would be the atlanta falcons they're facing off against the Seattle Seahawks, who are 26th in the league in passing yards allowed. Marcus Mariota has rushing upside. Pitts hasn't really gotten it going yet this season, but this could be the game where he breaks out. And then finally, Drake London. If you're looking for a cheaper stack, I don't know if you're going to find it. We try and give you one cheap stack every single week, and this might be the one. Having Pitts, which is essentially wide receiver one or two in that lineup, at the tight end position is a huge upside to you. 
I mean, take a quick look. If you have Mariota, London, and Kyle Pitts all under $5,800 in an offense that could potentially put up a lot of points, and you throw in a cheap defense, for now it's just the Panthers. Don't worry, that's probably not going to stay. But Jameis Winston does have a cracked back. This lineup is something that you could institute in a big tournament. I don't know if a lot of people are going to be playing Marcus Mariota. Just pay attention to the content creators that are out there. Pay attention to the blog reports. Go out and utilize your Fantasy Labs tool, your Stochastic tool, whatever it is that you use. Try and see the ownership projections of Marcus Mariota. Quickly plugging in a few of the players that we've talked about. You have Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, Christian Kirk, Tyler Lockett potentially just because of the price point. Dalvin Cook, if you don't like those two, then go ahead and put in Amon Ross St. Brown and Adam Thielen. And you still have $600 if you want to change something else and you want to pivot away to someone else. Just giving you options. That does it for our studs and stacks of week three of the NFL season. Go back and watch our sleepers and value plays for your chance to win that Millionaire Maker ticket. I greatly appreciate your support. Some of you have already signed up for Patreon just to go above and beyond and support the channel. And I greatly appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that do that, I try and give you a quick report on Saturday and Sunday mornings that say kind of our starting five. What stack I'm going with two other players, and then a player pool that I'm thinking of plugging in to those open spots. We give you the weather report, our quarterback and running back rankings, just how we think they're going to play out during that week. That does it for week three. Good luck. Go out, win some tournaments, bring home some extra cash. Get that beer tab money, baby.